everyone and this is a geek must have and this is a post bag and this might even be a mega post bag because I got notification from AliExpress of one of the packages being delivered and it has a bunch of little goodies in it so this post bag might be broken into two parts to avoid it taking on too long let's start with the simpler of the packages which is this one here from Wang Hao Jai Do in Guangdong, Shang, China. And on it it says acrylic box. I'm kind of hoping this is the acrylic box for my orange pot. Because that box, the orange pie, needs to have a little bit of love. And it's a little fan. And the standard acrylic parts, only I don't have to worry about tearing all of the paper off of them. And as I always mention, the complementary bag of parts of nuts and bolts that I can lose. And uh, this is the case for the orange pie. When you're ordering cases for the orange pies, you have to be very specific because there's an orange pie, then there's an orange pie plus, and then a plus two, and then a PC version, and I needed one for the orange pie plus two. And uh, this case with the cooling fan was $4.95. The next box from this post bag is from Mr. Lu, and he's from Zhengzhou Guangcheng-Hu District in Hunan Province. That's a completely different area of China than I've gotten any other packages before. On it, it says Integrated Circuits. Let's open it up and see what we got. I'm hoping that this is the box of integrated circuits. Oh, there is a bunch of stuff in here. Got some more of that infamous foul-smelling pink foam and a box full of parts. More foam. Yes, I believe this is the mega shipment. Typically, when I order from a vendor, I try not to try to limit myself to $20 from any one vendor unless it's a single high ticket item. Like recently I bought this uh, any secu frequency counter uh, meter and this was $37. So in that case I paid $37 for this and it was worth it. But I try to limit my purchases to $20 or less. And I think this might have been one of the times late at night after a few glasses of tequila that I decided to buy more. So let's dig into this. And there are a number of items here. The first item is a Raspberry Pi case. Oh, and it's got hardware in there. You can see inside of the box some little screws and some little feet. This is listed as the best-selling clear case for a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. And this is made by SB Components. I don't know if they're a big manufacturer of plastics or whatever. But this was a $1.57. The next item in that package is a pack of five of these double-sided prototype PCB boards and they're four by six, uh, four centimeters by six centimeters and they have uh, a number of connectors on the edge, two, four, seven, uh, just a bunch. And I, for the longest time I didn't have any PCB boards of this size. So these for the pack of five was $1.47. And they look like they're in really good nick. 
we'll know after we actually start to construct a project on them. The next item in that package are these very small, there's 10 of them, uh, voice module kits. They're uh, KD9561. They're alarm modules and they have four different types of sounds depending on where you apply the power to which one of these uh, pads on them. And the little blob is the integrated circuit, but it can do an alarm whistle, a fire alarm, an, um, an ambulance sound, and machine guns. So it does four different voices. The 10 of these were 99 cents. So they were 10 cents a piece shipped to me. These should be interesting to stick in a couple of projects just to have them make noise. The next item in the package is a supplies item. I typically buy a lot of things from Adafruit, but when I saw how much they wanted for uh, basically female header strips, I decided to go online and see what I could get them for, even though I would have to wait a little while longer. And I'm hoping they're of the same quality. These are female single row pin headers. They're 40 pins across the top and they're spaced at 2.54 millimeters, which is one of the standard spacings. I got 10 of these for $1.14. That's a pretty good deal. I hope they work. The next item in this post bag is these along the same idea of supplies. These are the dual actual double row of header pin strips. They're female. They're 40 pins across the top. These can be used in a lot of cases on breadboards going across the top, but you can also cut them and break them down and use them for other things. So there are six of these. They cost me $1.98 for the six of these. These help put some items back in stock that I was out of. The next item in this package are a set of five of these IRF 9Z24N. These are international rectifier MOSFETs. According to the data sheet on these, these are very fast switching. They're P-channel MOSFETs, P-channel MOSFETs, and they're rated up to about 50 watts. Uh, anywhere up to about 120 volts, I believe. A uh, package of five of these to replenish my inventory is $1.22. The next item in this package is a set of two of these adapters. They're uh, adapters to take uh, HDMI male plugs, plug them into the adapter, and then out of the adapter is a male micro HDMI. These are great for plugging into Raspberry Pis or Raspberry Pi Zeros or Raspberry Pi Zero Ws, etc. They're just a good convenience item to have around to allow you to take a standard HDMI sized cable and bring it down to a micro HDMI cable. The two of these shipped to me were 99 cents. The next item in the list is another set of adapters and these are what are commonly called gender benders and these allow you to change a USB 2 uh, female cord to a male cord. So you plug the female cord into one end and then you have a male cord coming out of the other. These are great for charge converters and the likes. These shipped to me for the two of them were 99 cents. The next item in this package is a Bluetooth adapter. And if you can see there on the outside, it says CSR 4.0. And CSR 4.0 means that it's a dual mode wireless dongle. It supports the regular Bluetooth communications as well as the Bluetooth LE or low energy. And I have a number of new Internet of Thing devices that require a Bluetooth low energy adapter in some of my 
PCs actually don't have it in them. This is a backup to allow me to uh, have a Bluetooth adapter that is CSR 4.0 or low energy compliant. And this was $2.15. The next item in the package is this pair of 2x40 male double row pins that are right angle pins. So when you solder them in to the board, it changes the direction of the pins to be 90 degrees, like this. These are standard spacing at 2.54 millimeters. You can break these anytime and break them any spot that you need to be able to use them on a project. These two, which will end up as part of my supplies, were 99 cents shipped to me. The next item in this package is another supplies item. Seems to be I've gone through almost all of the banana jacks that I had in my inventory. And these are four millimeter across the top. They're binding post as well where you can unscrew them, screw a wire through them. I've gone through almost all of these through a number of projects. So these refresh the inventory. These 10 or five of each color were $2.17. The next item in this post, in this package, is a pair of these 100 volt, 10 amp, volt amp meter, with a blue and a red uh, LED display. They have a power source that you provide to them up to 12 volts to power the meter. And then the actual signal, the signal jack is there. You can adjust them. There's a couple of adjustment points on here to adjust both the voltage and the amperage. I've used one of these in a uh, partially fail project where I built it into an Altoids tin. And I forgot to account for the fact that the plug that plugs into the back of here stuck out 10 millimeters wider than the width of the Altoids case. These are the meters that I'll use for part two of the same project, but in a different case. These volt amp meters were $2.31 each. The next item in this package is this programmable, programmable timer relay module. It runs in 12 volts. It has a uh, three-digit display up here. It has a series of buttons. It has a little piezo speaker there. It has an MCU on the board that has been pre-programmed at the factory. You're not able to change the programming on there, but it has a number of very good settings on it, including when the button is pressed, it waits for a period of time, then the relay comes on for a period of time and shuts off, or when you push the, when the circuit gets triggered, the, it waits for a certain period of time and the uh, relay comes on or by default the relay is on and when you hit the signal it waits for a period of time and shuts it off. There's a number of excellent modes that are available for this device to be able to control up to 220 volts. Kind of like the idea that it had a piezo alarm on it. The, count, the timer can be set in such a way that it does a countdown before the buzzer sounds off and it triggers the relay. This was $3.58 delivered to me. The next item we have in this package is a LM2596 buck converter. So it's a voltage converter to bring voltage down to a certain spot. It has an LED on here to let you set the voltage also has a pair of buttons on it to be able to do the settings. A trimmer potentiometer up here to do some fine adjustments. This will power up to 40 volts. The output on it is about 37 volts at that point. It'll handle safely 15 watts before anything starts to fry. These are very useful in a number of purposes for reducing voltage. Don't have a use for it yet, but wanted to have a couple of these in stock. The last item in this post bag is a set of five delay trigger chip timers. These are capable of being programmed to anywhere from two seconds up to 1,000 hours. They take three volts. You basically send a signal to them. They wait for the determined amount of time. Then they trigger a different 
set of pins on this. And those pins can drive things, but you have to be very low current items for you to be able to drive them. The set of five of these were 99 cents shipped to me. All of the items that you've seen in this package came from the AliExpress store called TX Hang Electronics. Everything looks very well built. It was packaged well and the entire order was complete with nothing missing or incorrect and I really appreciate that so I'd like to thank them. It should be interesting putting some of these things in the projects and replenishing my supplies. If you like this video please click on the like button. If you have any comments or suggestions about the items here put them in the comment the feedback section below. I have a blog called geekmusthave.com where I publish articles about computer technology and I'd like you to subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. Now Take some time off and build something with LEDs in it.